Hello everyone. My name is Richard Gentry, president and founder of RG Strategic Interventions, LLC. I want to welcome you to this segment. And I, uh, I've been talking about uh, a lot of wonderful things that I think will be beneficial uh, to the direct care practitioner and also those who are involved in uh, various capacities of uh, out of home placement facilities such as juvenile detention or residential. But this also works in the community, in community-based settings, as well as in uh, our schools and uh, group homes and uh, various uh, facilities uh, such as that. I want to talk about relationships uh, on this segment. I want to talk about uh, the importance of building positive, strong, and healthy relationships. In the past two segments, I talked about uh, trauma and the impact of trauma uh, on uh, youth and uh, population that we serve. And I provided some different strategies and tips and information that I think will be very helpful uh, to you. Uh, but everything I shared before in regards to interventions would be futile without the establishment of positive uh, relationships, healthy relationships. So I want to place a strong emphasis on the need to connect with those you're working with. That is a very important aspect of the work that we do. Any therapist will tell you whether they're doing individual counseling or uh, group counseling, group therapy, that if they cannot connect with their clients, their work really will be in vain. So many of them, if it's individual counseling, let's take that for an example. Uh, the first number of sessions will be uh, strictly focusing on establishing a relationship with that person. Because if a person don't trust us, they're not going to apply anything that we're giving them. If they don't think we care about them, uh, basically we're going through the motions. And so it is in so many aspects of life. Uh, relationships are the glue that hold human beings together. And that is the case also when we're working with the population that we are working with. Uh, we need to understand that young people want to connect with us. Uh, they want to have relationships with us. Uh, irregardless of what situations they have come out of, uh, it might be the gang banger, uh, it might be the loner, uh, it might be the awkward kid, uh, the super cool kid, you know, that uh, want to present himself or herself a certain way uh, to people. Whoever it is, the bottom line is uh, they want relationships with the people that they're working with. Even if they say, uh, you know, they don't want a relationship or leave me alone, and, you know, they behave in a way to try to keep you away from them. Uh, once we uh, get through the layers, the bottom line is, is that they want to connect. So we have to understand how important it is uh, with whatever we do with young people uh, that building relationships, powerful relationships based on healthy boundaries and trust is extremely important. In fact, we want to make that ground zero in regards to working with this population. So it is about relationships. Martian Evans in 2009 produced uh, some wonderful research, uh, and their research revealed that detained youth, they want more positive involvement with the adults that they're working with. Uh, and not only that, but they have made a correlation between positive relationships and outcomes in regards to how well they do uh, in the environment once they are done. So these immediate outcomes we find to be very successful if they have um, had the uh, wonderful experience of connecting with adults. So I take the approach that all the kids uh, that's in um, custody, all the kids who are in uh, the facility that I work and want relationships with my staff. So when I'm hiring, uh, when I'm recruiting, when I'm presenting and lecturing, I talk about the need for staff to be able to form positive relationships with kids based on healthy boundaries. We're not going to compromise our standards 
We're not going to compromise our rules, policies, or procedures. But there is a way to make a connection. Uh, whereas we're doing the things that we say we're going to do, uh, that we are um, uh, caring and trustworthy individuals, that we are fair, firm, and consistent. And if we're holding to these uh, truths, uh, we'll find that uh, our work will be very effective and uh, the young people will come to trust us. Uh, they'll be able to approach us with issues, concerns, problems. And many of them, if they don't want to succeed for themselves at the moment, they will want to succeed for you. So we have learned through research that kids want to build positive relationships. And there is a link between the positive relationships that they form with us and outcomes in regards to success in the community. Once I became uh, the director of the facility that I'm in, there, there was some conflict and, and some controversy. And, and uh, one of the things that I wanted to do as a young director was I wanted to root out the staff that did not like kids. And it is a problem in our industry is that we have lots of people working with kids in our industry that do not like kids. And so that formula, it doesn't work at all when we are looking to uh, help kids become healthy and pro-social. So in recruiting staff, you want to make sure that they are the right kind of people, you know, who really care about kids, who believe that uh, kids can and do change, that they are willing to make an investment uh, into the young people that they are working with, that uh, the work that they do, they see it as a calling, that is not just a job. They're just not coming to work to punch a clock in and out, but they have the ability and potential to bring forth lasting change in individuals, whereas they can uh, go out to the community and feel good about the things that they do, that they can feel good about the relationships that they form. And we can uh, be very proud that we had a part in helping an individual become uh, healthy. Uh, the individual may have come to us broken, they may have come to us damaged, but we can work with kids and through powerful relationships, it can play a tremendous role in helping a person to become whole again. Of all the things that we can do in regards to working with young people, uh, more so than any programs that we have to offer or interventions, building healthy relationships with young people is the greatest thing that we can do. Oftentimes when I present, especially to direct care staff, I open my presentations by referring to them as my heroes, and I honor them and I give them respect. I give honor to whom honor is due and respect to whom respect is due. And so I am very sincere when I refer to juvenile justice and child welfare practitioners as well as teachers as my heroes because they give themselves uh, to the young people and they go above and beyond the call of duty. Most of them do that uh, in order to see uh, young people succeed. So when you hear the word hero, different things come to mind uh, to different people. When I was a kid, I loved the superheroes, the Marvel comics. You know, I could pretty much quote each day uh, when each uh, of the superheroes would uh, uh, come on TV. I would rush home from school and grab a snack and, and, and sit in front of that black and white TV at the time. Uh, I only had a few channels that we could get. But I look forward to being able to tune in to the superheroes. On a Monday, it was Captain America. On Tuesday, it was Iron Man. Uh, on Wednesday, it was, um, it was um, the Mighty Thor. And we had the Submariner on, on Thursday. And we had the, the Mighty Thor. Uh, so I really enjoy uh, those uh, 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 heroes. In addition to those guys, there's Batman and Spider-Man, and, and the whole thing about these guys is that they would save the day. They would save their cities, they would save mankind you know, from the bad guy. And that's what made them heroes because they saved lives. So what constitutes a hero? Uh, as I uh, mentioned earlier, 
I see direct care staff. I see people who give themselves to working with these kids day in and day out and dealing with the things that they deal with. And, and, and some of them are, are, well, I won't talk about them here on this, um, uh, in this setting, but you know, they have to deal with some pretty gross things at times, uh, but they come back to work and they do it again the next day without uh, holding grudges or not uh, having attitudes you know, uh, with the kids or the things that have happened the previous day but they see that the following day is a new day and a new opportunity uh, with new horizons and um, an opportunity to do some great work with these people. So uh, there's a video clip that I show when I do presentations that say what constitute a hero. Uh, and uh, this video clip was taken from the University of uh, Georgia. And uh, this person um, uh, who uh, was the author of the video went about uh, the campus at, at University of Georgia uh, the Bulldogs and uh, he interviewed uh, various students uh, on campus and uh, he asked them what what is, does a hero mean to you what constitute a hero and, and these were some of the some of the responses that uh, he received a hero is someone who gives hopes and dreams a hero is someone who can be imitated a hero goes out of their way to help others they are selfless figures. Heroes do not look for personal gain. They make sacrifices and heroes save lives. So I ask this question based on some of the responses from those students. Are you a hero when it comes to working with kids? You know, I ask them, I want you to, uh, these practitioners, I want you to reflect on that. You know, are, are you a hero? Do you see yourself as a hero because you save lives? And it is true that many heroes don't see themselves as heroes. I do understand that. You know, saying, well, the situation presented itself. And, you know, there was a fire and I had to go in there because there was a kid in there. And I, I just went in there. I wasn't necessarily thinking. Um, and, but I had to save that person's life. I just had to go in there and get them. Or, you know, there was a car. You know, gasoline's leaking. And there's a potential of a fire. And the door is jammed. And they somehow get that door uh, open and, and, and rescue that woman out of that car that's about to... Uh, explode and pull them out, uh, you know, of the jaws of death. And uh, the interview will say, interviewer will ask, uh, hey, you see yourself as a hero? No, I don't see myself as a hero. I was just uh, doing what I need to do in the moment. I'm just a, a normal person. So a lot of these people are very humble, but they feel a uh, high calling to work with these young people and to benefit and, and to help them. Uh, but heroes, the bottom line, are lifesavers. And we uh, the work that we do, um, when we give it our all, we have great potential in saving the lives of individuals, saving the lives from uh, uh, drug addiction and, and saving the lives uh, from alcoholism, uh, a life of despair and incarceration, um, and uh, many of them uh, are saved from just being unproductive and finding themselves into uh, psychiatric hospitals and, and uh, uh, care facilities. So as we go forth and do this work, and I often call it God's work that we're doing, uh, that we're greatly benefiting society. Uh, and although we don't get a lot of thanks from the community and people don't recognize uh, or understand the work that we do or understand why we do it, uh, yet we do it. And uh, with that being said, uh, we form these great uh, and wonderful relationships. So um, uh, these people are all Americans as well as heroes. Uh, so, um, I do this teaching, um, I, I actually get it from a man by the name of uh, Dr. Uh, David Rausch. He, he talks about this and, and he goes all the way back to the Michigan Juvenile Detention Association's um, annual conference at Higgins Lake, Michigan. And he talks about this gentleman who came in and began to talk about his All-American team. And so Dr. Rausch has um, uh, put forth this information uh, in uh, his publications. A desktop guide to a good juvenile detention practice and I have uh, here that's on display uh, recalibrating juvenile detention lessons learned uh, from uh, the court operated reforms in Cook County uh, Chicago uh, he talks about this all-american staff and um, uh, who is this person uh, these are the kind of people that we want in our facilities these are the kind of people that we want uh, working with our kids and the first thing is we want a person that's optimistic a person whose glass 
is half full and not half empty. Uh, they see great potential with our young people. So they believe in the potential of these kids uh, to change, uh, to be great. Uh, they're not negative about the work that they do, although they may see a lot of dysfunction uh, with the population and a lot of negativity. Uh, and uh, these kids from, come from uh, such uh, 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 horrible situations and sometimes with the naked eye it seems like there's no reform. Uh, but an All-American staff believes in the potential of people to change. More specifically, they believe in the potential of children to change. They respect the sacredness of personhood. In other words, God did not make junk. So everybody should be esteemed. Everyone should be valued. Every child has been created in the image and the likeness of God. They all have a purpose. They all have a destiny. Uh, they all have uh, some important, wonderful role to fulfill on this earth. And we have the honor and the privilege of recognizing that in them and treating them with dignity and respect, even though they may not act lovely at times, and even though they may exhibit certain extreme acting out behaviors, we have to understand as an All-American that God does not create junk. The All-American staff is capable of caring, not just caring a little, but the All-American staff is capable of caring a lot. The All-American staff is fair, He's consistent, he's firm, uh, he's not one way uh, one day and then he's completely different another day. Uh, he's not wishy-washy, he's not inconsistent, but our young people know what they're going to get. They're going to get a caring person, a person uh, that sometimes may be hard on them and when they need to be. Uh, we call it tough love, uh, but they're going to come back and they're going to explain uh, what they do with young people and why they do it. And it's because they, they care. And uh, believe it or not, the last thing is, is, is this, and, and, and I find this very interesting because uh, there's research out there that says that uh, young people, one of the uh, 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 qualities they want to see in their caregivers is that they get along with their team members. So all American staff are able to get along with their team members. That's what kids want to see when they were asked questions about uh, a good staff, a good quality staff, uh, they said, I want them to be able to get along with their, with their team members, and that means a lot. Kids want stability, they want structure, they want stable individuals in their lives. So an All-American staff is a stable individual that comes to provide struct structure and, and predictability, um, and consistency in the lives of these young people. Many of them come from very chaotic situations. Uh, they come from unpredictable situations. Many of them have moved from one apartment to another, uh, to another after being evicted time and time again. Many of them have been bounced around family members. Some of them have been homeless, living um, in abandoned homes, uh, living in cars, living in shelters and things like that. So now they find stability in staff. They find predictability in staff. They find uh, caring and uh, a staff that's not gonna leave them because of a situation. That They're gonna show up for work and they're gonna have a good attitude and they're gonna be motivated to work with them and spend time with them and, and help them and be fair about discipline and be fair about counsel and everything that they do. Uh, this is what they want. So. Um, I just wanted to give you some information on the importance of relationships, and um, that's the foundation of everything that we do, and we will continue to uh, provide information in, the, in these clips. If you have uh, tuned in through my website, which is www.rgstrategicinterventions.com, I want to thank you for that. Uh, if you had the opportunity to uh, tune in on YouTube, we want to uh, encourage you to keep on uh, uh, tuning in and checking in um, with these video clips. We will continue to produce them uh, and it will be a lot for you to be able to view and benefit from and help you in your uh, professional career. And that's uh, our goal here at uh, RG Strategic Intervention. So until next time, we want to thank you and we look forward to um, you checking in in the very near future.